So fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, uh, evaluation team one, to evaluate Jane. And they will be number one on of your sheets that you have, you only use one of the sheets. And one, two, or three you can choose. And uh, they will start with you. Okay. Jane, I really enjoyed your speech today. I personally think it's a challenge to be able to craft stories and jokes that talk about a dear friend like Sheila that are humorous and yet without coming across in any way mean. But I think that because you know Sheila very well, and it's very obvious that, that you are concerned to do a good job in matching the jokes to Sheila's personality, you, you did a really good job. Since Sheila by nature tends to be slow and quiet, you focused on that a lot. You took the common phrases that we're all familiar with, slow as a turtle, quiet as a mouse, and did a very nice job of tying that into Sheila's personality. Talking about Pokey Pinocchi was really <laughs> interesting. I like that a lot because I'm a, I like alliteration. So Pokey Pinocchi is very, very useful for me. You also talked about a lot of other things that we could relate to. Being slow, being quiet. You talked about her memory not being the greatest, which I forgot what you said about that because my <laughs> memory is not the greatest either. But it, it was very good. And it was quite obvious to me that Sheila enjoyed your roast of her. I could hear her laughing. I could see her smiling and really enjoying what she said. So you did a nice job of, of making it humorous and pleasant to listen to. I believe that the audience also found your speech very enjoyable. I heard a lot of laughs throughout the entire audience. I think your jokes were effective, and I especially liked the story that you told near the end about the directions, where she gave the directions and you still got lost, and your reference to the blind leading the blind. I, I think that was kind of a step out of your box to say that because of the fact that Sheila is blind, but you did it in a very nice way, and I think everybody in the audience really enjoyed this a lot. I did enjoy your as well. Don't miss the boat. Don't get lost. The reference back to him in silence. Nice job, Jane. It was my job to look at Jane's delivery to see if it contributed or hindered the effect of your material. And first of all, it takes guts to uh, try to uh, do humorous material. Uh, no one knows that uh, better than me because I've fallen on my face many, many times. Uh, I thought you had two different deliveries. You had one delivery which sort of said, I'm having a lot of fun here. And you were saying to Sheila, I'm either going to give you a poke in the eye or a punch in the stomach with love. And uh, you did this with... Um, very, in a very natural style. You were having a lot of fun, and you were giving all of us permission uh, to have fun along with you. You had a smile on your face. Um, so no matter what you said, we, you know, we take it seriously, but we weren't going to take it too serious because uh, we knew you were having fun. I contrast that with your opening as a uh, part of your speech, where it was, it was formal. It was like uh, you, you turned on this formal aspect which said, I am now speaking, I am the Toastmaster, I'm in control here. And I didn't think that was quite as effective as the fun style. The one thing you did between the two, the transitions were very smooth because you had your material set up in such a way that as you came out of the formal material, it went right into uh, the joke. And uh, it was very easy uh, to uh, see how the two linked. I think what that did, however, uh, the formal part, that is, was sometimes you brought, when you wanted to make a point, you brought a little bit over the top. So where does the opportunity for stretching come? That comes from 
I think, a mixture of the two styles. Because I don't always see that fun style, Jane, and it's very natural for it. <coughs> it just is natural. And if you take that natural part, which may be a little stretch for you, and put that into your formal part, I think you have the opportunity for a tremendously engaging style that may be a new direction for you. But I think um, as, as a fun part, and I think you tend to take yourself seriously, but you, you're fun. And you are having fun there, and I think that will work for you very well. Good speech. Thank you. Jane, I was going to be looking at the vocal variety of body language just to kind of take off from what Perry was saying, you know, the fun side was great to see, so don't let your hair down, because actually it's really cute like that. So, <laughs> um, your vocal variety was something that we don't normally hear very often, because you are very quiet and reserved. So when you came up and you started right with, you were looking for someone that was in the Christian groups that, you know, you actually were very loud and saying, I do, I do. So that got your attention right away. You also, when you were talking, you uh, had some sarcasm. So when, like Perry was talking about a fun and formal, you had a lot of different on your vocal variety, and it was actually very effective because you did a lot of times when you told your jokes, you used um, a lot of uh, higher pitches, louder, and um, it, was, it seemed to be appropriate. Um, I do want to tie that into the body language part of that. Um, when you first started, and Perry was talking formal, and so that was very interesting where you got the two separates of that is you were very formal until you touched Sheila. And when you touched Sheila in a roast, that kind of gave you permission to continue on with that roast, that there was a connection with her and that it was good. I might have would have liked to have seen more touching with her and sometimes that's used as a means of like I'm really sorry I'm going to say this kind of <laughs> thought process but I'm you know and so that you really are friends more I mean you did touch her a lot but maybe a little bit more would have been good you you really I know you wanted to get away from your notes and so I think that might have been part of your body language uh, negative had to, because you did step away out front, and you um, did, you had a, a gesture where you would tie this in with the vocal variety, where you would clutch your fists, and you'd tighten your knees, and you'd bend over, and then, then you, that would be a way to speak louder. Sometimes when it really means a good, loud vocal variety, that was appropriate, but you kind of get into this habit that was like a comfort little child infant pose that you go into so you can speak louder because that is out of your box. Kind of pay attention to your body language when you do your vocal variety for the higher. You came across on your fun and natural side when you, I thought it was the end of your speech, when you sincerely spoke to Sheila. I've known you for 16 years, and you really you looked at her, and you, you drew us into this. I thought it was the ending, and it would have been nice to have put that at the ending. Then you continued with a couple more. <coughs> but overall, you did really well. Your body language and your connection with Sheila was very apparent, and we totally enjoyed it. So from this now, we have Jane's uh, response. Speak louder, please. So it, it helped for me to hear the feedback on the evaluation. Because I know sometimes I think I'm, I'm not as confident as I know I, I, I can tell jokes and I can be funny. So that helps a lot. <laughs> it's, it's with the kids, teaching the kids too. So your feedback really is going to help stretch me more in Toastmasters. I just have to come out of that comfort zone.
I enjoy the little kid jokes. Yeah. I like little kid jokes. I get them. <laughs> <laughs> I know Jamie has a couple, couple of really great lines. The blind, blind lady in the blind, the, the Cheerio. You got a good laugh yeah. on that. That was that was good. that was really cute. Oh, there's a couple instances I think you could even go stretch even further. Um, when you said she savors every bite, so you could maybe make a, a, a find a simile that what would be like savoring every bite or. Um, where did the water go? So something like that, just maybe stretch those out a little bit more, and I think you can get another joke in there. Great. Anyone else? We have one more. Yeah. Great. Well, Jay, thank you. We really enjoyed this speech, and it's great to uh, get to know Sheila a little bit better. And you're going to take her down to Minneapolis with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I need her. <laughs> so with that, uh, thank you.